There are so many different running watches out there and which one is right for you is massively dependent on what you want to get out of it. So we've got basically the entire range of Garmin watches that any runner could want. We're gonna take you through them one by one as quickly as we can in a whirlwind tour so that hopefully you can make a better decision. So our friends at Garmin have sent us essentially their entire range that any runner could want to choose from. And I'm going to help you to filter down to the right watch for you. But first off, we're gonna pop on the screen here all of the features that are consistent across all of the watches that you can see in front of me now. We split the watches into three broad sections. We're gonna start off with fitness or lifestyle focused watches, then running specialist watches in the middle, and then move on to what would be classed as outdoor watches. And in each of those sections, we're broadly gonna step up in price as we go. So we're gonna start with what you might consider an entry level running tracker or fitness tracker and that is the Garmin Vivo Smart 5. So this is the only watch that we're gonna talk about today where actually it doesn't have built-in standalone GPS functionality. That's the main difference here, I suppose. You need to take your phone with you if you want to get active. You do get wrist-based optical heart rate on this watch, and you also get things like rep counting. If you're in the gym, it will automatically count the reps for you as you're doing a particular activity. And what I think is a nice feature, you can pop it out and change the color of the strap if you want to accessorize in a different way. So who's this watch for? Ultimately, if you're looking for something of a particular aesthetic, this looks like a fitness tracker as opposed to a sports or running watch. So it might go more effectively with what you wear to work or during the day. It's very capable for use in the gym. If you're not too worried about really accurate running data and about having your phone with you or playing music or anything separately from the watch, then this could be a good option for you. So for example, if you're just starting out in your running journey, looking for something that will track your sleep and stress levels and things like that, as well as other activities, and you occasionally run, for example, a park run on a Saturday morning, then this could be a really good choice. Still in the fitness category, this is Garmin's Vivo Active 4. And so it's an immediately different watch to look at. It has a traditional watch form factor. It has two buttons on the side here as well. And actually, as we look at some of the running watches later on, they move to a five button setup. So that is a, a difference here in, in a fitness tracking perspective. The Vivo Active 4 has music built in, so you can stream from different music services like Spotify and Deezer and so on. This has built in GPS, as do all of the rest of the watches that we're gonna talk about. So you don't need to take your phone with you for that additional accuracy and functionality in terms of tracking. It has a touch screen, which actually at one of the more affordable watches in Garmin's range is a nice addition. You can swipe through the menus and tap to confirm your choice and swipe to move back again, as well as using the buttons to navigate if you choose to. So who's this watch for? Essentially, it's a really good all-rounder. It doesn't have some of the advanced running specific details and features that we're gonna talk about a little bit later on. So things like performance condition, training status, or load monitoring. So looking at how much running you're doing and what's the right things for you to do. But if, like me, a few years ago where I made the decision to get back into running just for fun and the two things that were most important for me were tracking my runs and being able to listen to music, then this is a great choice. The last watch that I'm gonna talk about in the fitness category is the Venue SQ2. And actually, I'm not just gonna talk about this watch, I'm gonna talk about the Venue 2 series as a whole. There's also the Venue 2 and then the Venue 2 Plus. And broadly, as a category, what those watches are aimed at is let's get a more complete picture of your health. So rather than being focused on one particular sport, if you're interested in going into the gym, running, a little bit of swimming, lots of different activities, and just staying healthy, then these watches are aimed at helping you to keep track of that. One of the key features across the Venue 2 series is that they all have an AMOLED screen, so it's really bright, really vibrant. Actually, that's an excellent selling point here because that is a big distinction between that and the watches that we've just seen. The Venue 2 Plus is the most premium of Garmin's range of lifestyle watches because you get some extra features. Things like a microphone to allow you to take and make phone calls from your watch itself, and also to be able to respond directly to text messages on the watch. So who's this watch for? Well, from a running perspective, perhaps it's from someone who's not concerned with all of the super advanced running tracking metrics and is focused on a whole range of different activities or perhaps a picture of their overall health. And ultimately, I think someone who cares about the aesthetic. These are beautifully designed watches with the way the bezel, the strap, and the screen all go together. All of the watches we've talked about so far, with the exception of the Vivo Smart 5, actually are compatible with Garmin Coach, which is completely free to anyone who has Garmin products. You can use the app to sync training plans to your watch, whether you're training for any specific distance or potentially a goal time as well. Now we're into dedicated running watches with the Forerunner range, starting with the Forerunner 55, which is Garmin's entry-level watch and a lot of runners' first watches. 
We go straight into Garmin's running format here, which is having five buttons, three to navigate on the left-hand side of the screen, and then two on the right-hand side, one of which is the main start and stop button. And for a lot of running purists, this is important because it allows you to do things like splits and lap times whilst you're running, which having fewer buttons doesn't always allow for. So whilst this is the entry-level watch, it's definitely not short on features. So starting off with some of the key headline figures, there's two weeks of battery life, which is quite a lot more than some of the lifestyle watches we've talked about already, and 20 hours of battery life during GPS only activity tracking. You can use the watch with Garmin Coach, which you can use within Garmin Connect, or actually this watch has a really great feature which is called daily suggested workouts. And actually there's an entire video where Sarah followed just what her watch told her to do for a month, which you can check out to find out how she got on. But in doing so, what the watch does is just tries to help you get fitter. So if you don't want to follow a dedicated plan, you just want to have the watch suggest something, and it won't just say go for a run, it will give you intervals and so on once it's got a good gauge of your fitness, then actually that's an amazing feature that helps a lot of runners in the early part of their running journey. There are other running specific features which you don't get on the watches we've mentioned so far, so things like Pace Pro, track running, which is a dedicated setting if you are running around a track to make the tracking more accurate. Recovery advisor, which lets you know how long the watch thinks you should leave until you do another hard activity. Cadence alerts, stress tracking, body battery, actually stress tracking and body battery you can do on the previous lifestyle watches. Respiration tracking, and then a race predictor. So based on the data, how much you use the watch, the 455 will let you know what it thinks you can run for 5K, 10K, half marathon and marathon. This watch could be great for a beginner or someone who's never had a running watch before and is taking their step from using their phone for tracking things to using a watch for the first time. But equally, it will be just at home with a pretty experienced runner who perhaps doesn't want some of the more premium features that we're gonna talk about on some of the watches that are coming up now. Next up, we've got the Forerunner 255. And so the first thing to talk about with this one is actually that it comes in four different versions. So two different sizes. This is the 255S, which is the smaller version. And actually there's a battery life difference between those two as well. And then there's a music version. So small and large, music and no music. There is a slight step up in battery life between this and the 55. So in GPS mode, you'll get a little bit more. So if that's important to you, bear that in mind. There's a built-in triathlon feature, which you don't get in the 55. And actually this one does support far more activity profiles on the watch uh, at any one time. You have daily suggested workouts, but also you have something called race widget. So the difference here is that you can set a goal, a race that you're training for. And then that means that your suggested workouts are a little bit smarter because they know you're training for a specific goal. You also get something called morning report, which gives you a kind of morning status update on lots of different metrics that the watch has been measuring while you sleep. It works on HRV status, which measures the inconsistency or consistency between consecutive heartbeats. And the changes in that can often lead to potentially early indicators of illness or advising how quickly you're going to recover from something. There's also another feature which is quite a big step up here and that's courses or navigation. So some of the watches we're gonna talk about in a minute actually have full map support, which this doesn't have. What it has is breadcrumb navigation. So you can choose or design a course from Garmin Connect app send it to the watch and then go out and follow it. You just won't be able to see an actual map display on the watch itself, but you can see where you are and it will tell you if you go off or on course. You get pulse ox, which is a measure of your oxygen saturation in your bloodstream, a bit like if you go into hospital and they put something on your finger. You get health snapshot, which takes a look at an overall snapshot of your health by monitoring you for a couple of minutes at a time and then you can check in on that at regular periods. You have Garmin Pay, so actually if you set this up with a particular credit card, you can use the watch when you don't have a phone or a wallet with you to pay for things in a contactless way. And then something that is quite a big deal, multiband GNSS, so that allows this watch to connect to multiple different satellites to allow you to avoid interference in built-up areas or perhaps wooded areas for a more accurate GPS signal. So anyone considering the 4 and a 55 might want to consider the 255 if something like music and maybe navigation, those are the two massive things for me personally when I'm running, allowing myself to listen to Bluetooth headphones and a podcast or some music while I'm running, then this is probably worth the upgrade. So thinking about progress, this watch might be for someone who set a very specific goal. So if you've got a specific goal in mind, you'd like the idea of entering that into the race widget and then using something like suggested workouts to plan your progress towards that goal, then this is a really good consideration. And then throw in navigation and music, then this is worth considering. The 955, this is Garmin's first dedicated running watch in the Forerunner series to have solar. So this is the 955 solar and also 
to have a touch screen. So you can actually see the solar technology in a small band around the outside of the screen between the screen and the bezel. That harvests solar energy to give you extra battery life. So the solar version of this watch has more battery life than the regular version, but both versions are a step up in battery life from the 255. It's also worth mentioning that each subsequent model also has all of the features from the previous model. So the 255 can do everything that the 55 can do, and the 955 can do everything that the 255 can do. So for a pretty big watch with a clear, bright screen, it's actually super lightweight. The improvements in battery life will allow you to run for longer, but also there are some really cool new features that you don't get in the other models, stuff that I'm excited about, like training readiness. So using all of the amazing data that Garmin is harvesting about you as you run and as you rest and recover, training readiness will tell you exactly how ready you are to go and take on a particular type of session. In addition to that, there's something called stamina. Again, a really cool feature where ultimately the watch tells you live as you're running how long you're going to be able to sustain that effort based on all of the previous data that it knows about you and how hard you're working at that moment in time. So it might tell you that you can only run for another 15 kilometers at your current pace. It also shows you your depletion of that stamina. And then in real time, if you recover a little bit, you can see that bounce back. Whether you buy the solar version or not, there's music on all versions of the 955. One of the other features, which is an upgrade from the 255 here, which is really exciting, is the addition of turn-by-turn -turn navigation and full mapping support, which in combination with the touchscreen makes navigating in new areas really exciting. I've had some of my best runs using this navigation feature where I've gone somewhere completely new, plotted a course based on other users' data within the Garmin Connect app, and then gone out exploring, knowing that I'm not gonna get lost. I can see exactly where I am on the map. And if I want to see what's coming up ahead, I can zoom out a little bit, zoom in, move the map around, or use another feature which is introduced in the 955 called Up Ahead, which shows you what's coming up, whether that's landmarks, points of interest, or particular turns, or you can set that to particular waypoints if you've plotted the route yourself. This is the flagship running watch from Garmin. So if you want all of the features that they have to offer, if you want to absolutely optimize your training to the best of the ability that their technology can offer you, then this is the watch for you. While we're talking about the 4 and a 955, how would you like to be in with a chance of winning one? We're going to give one to a very lucky running channel subscriber, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you can get us to 2,500 likes on this video, just hit the like button. Then we're going to pick someone from the comments and send them a brand new 4 and a 955. If you don't know what to comment, let us know which of these has taken your fancy or the longest distance that you've ever run and recorded on your watch. Those are the running dedicated watches and there was a lot of information there. So again, we're gonna pop that up on the screen before we move into talking about outdoor watches, which still have a lot to offer a lot of runners out there. First up out of the outdoor and adventure watches we're gonna talk about is the Instinct 2. There are lots of cool different versions of this. It's made for people who like being outdoors, getting an overall picture of their health and wellness, tracking activities, and basically taking on an adventure because it's bulletproof um, and it's broadly protected from the elements with the way that it's made with this really rugged casing and the nice outdoor aesthetic. That approach to the outdoors and adventure is reflected in the different versions that you can get. There are camo versions, surf versions, a dedicated tactical edition for those who work in sensitive areas or in the military, which has things like a kill switch where you can press one button to completely erase all the data on the watch, stealth mode so that it doesn't actually record your data to the watch, it just shows your live stats. And then things that help you jump out of airplanes and find target zones if you're parachuting. So I haven't tested any of those features. Not only does the watch feel bulletproof, but it'll also last forever as well. So there's four weeks use out of this in smartwatch mode, but longer than that and potentially forever if you use the solar version as well and we're outside enough. That's in part due to the screen. So they have a very different approach to the screen on this watch to any of the other watches that we're talking about today. There are little details like where the date sits and scrolling through the menus looks quite different. So there's no colors or anything here. Keeping it simple has allowed them to focus on making the core features amazing, in particular that battery life. So for people who live a pretty adventurous lifestyle and don't just stick to running and take on more exciting activities, potentially more dangerous activities as well, then the fact that it's more or less indestructible, it's built to a military standard for thermal and shock resistance. And the fact that it has amazing features for things like mountain biking called grit and flow measurements, which measure how difficult a trail might be or how smoothly you descend to give you a score to beat next time, then if that's you, you should take a look. Next up, we got the Phoenix 7, and actually this is my own watch. This is the one that I've already selected out of this lineup. Broadly, it's a very, very similar watch to the Forerunner 955. So in terms of feature set, it's almost identical. It has the touchscreen, navigation, all of the mapping and so on. But I prefer, from a personal perspective, the aesthetic of it. Uh, I wear it almost every day. Um, it has a metal bezel, so it's made from different materials. 
and it has slightly longer battery life, so actually 57 hours in GPS mode for all those massive ultramarathons I'm taking on, um, and 57 days in battery saver mode, and that's in the non-solar version. So like the 955, there are solar and non-solar versions of this, as well as sapphire versions with different protection to the screen in terms of the glass that they use. But with that battery life, ultimately it's heavier. So if you want a really lightweight running watch with all of the same features as this, then the 955 should be the one that you choose. If you like the aesthetic of this and the additional battery life and the idea of the outdoor lifestyle that I think that it speaks to, then this is a great choice too. But actually it's also worth noting that there are different sizes too. So there's the Phoenix 7S, which is a smaller, lighter version. But when they're smaller and lighter, you lose a little bit of battery life. And there's also a Phoenix 7X version, which is the larger version and comes with things like a built-in flashlight to see when it's dark out on the trails or if you're just rooting around on a campsite for something. Then we've got the Epix, or technically what's called the Epix Gen 2, because there was an older version of the Epix which looks very different to this. And in this case, the Generation 2 of the Epix is exactly the same in terms of features as the Phoenix 7. It's the same size as the regular Phoenix 7. The big difference is that this has an AMOLED screen. It has a beautiful phone-like screen that's really bright and bold and does make a massive difference if you're navigating the maps out on the trails or if you're trying to follow along with one of the guided strength workouts. That screen comes at a slight battery life penalty because it takes more battery to run that beautiful screen, but because the battery life is already so long on the Phoenix, you still get a really strong battery life number out of this watch. And then last up, we're nearly there now. This is the Enduro 2, which is aimed squarely at ultra runners. No compromise on any sort of battery life here. It will broadly last forever. It has a massive screen as well, so a screen comparable to the Phoenix 7X, which is the big version of the Phoenix. It also comes with the flashlight on this, which is twice as bright as that on the Phoenix 7X. I've been reliably told that that means it's as bright almost as a head torch when you're out on a trail, so genuinely useful to navigate by. This is aimed squarely at ultra runners and has a massive focus on battery life. So it's not a lightweight watch, but given how long it will last for and the fact that it has solar charging capabilities, I think that's potentially a trade-off worth making. So if you are taking on a really long event, you want a larger screen. The screen here is about the same size as the Phoenix 7X to be able to navigate by because it has full mapping and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It also has ultra-specific features like an automatic rest timer, which automatically keeps track of the time you spend at an aid station during an ultra run activity. So you won't need to worry about pausing it and forgetting to restart it. So if you've already got a dream ultra that you want to take on, you've put one on your bucket list, it might be worth adding the Enduro 2 to that list as well. So we're going to put the stats up on screen again to summarise what are quite different use cases and features across all of the different outdoor watches, but we made it. We've gone through the entire range, starting with the fitness watches, onto the running specialist watches, and then the outdoor watches. But you should watch this video next where you can find out exactly what happened when Sarah took on the challenge of doing exactly what her watch told her to do for 30 days.